Hi, welcome back to my channel. So I'm doing a new artist demonstration and I didn't quite finish the word real here before I was getting ready to do my live stream. So I figured I would finish the word here. You can see I put the text up at the top. Here you go, there. I like to have a reference while I'm doing my letters because I'm a very bad speller and it's very easy for me to mix up letters. You can see my guidelines here. I did some uh, angled guidelines as well, and that helps for getting my words at a consistent angle. I also uh, just need to finish the last bit of the cursive here with the E-A-L. And you have to use um, very light pressure. You want to use a 2H sort of graphite pencil. It's the lightest, um, it's the hardest graphite, so therefore the least amount comes off. So when you use really gentle pressure, it just puts a little bit of mark on the page. You don't need to press too hard. You really just want the gentle, gentle lines so that they're very easily erased. I really love cursive fonts, so I've been playing with those a lot in this Bloodwork series. And I apologize if you hear some background noise. There we go. So that's all done. But yeah, they're doing construction nearby to my place, and it just is happening all the time. So I love the Faber-Castell pens. These are what I used last time. The S means small, and then this is an F, which means fine, and we have 1.5, which is the really thick one that I like to use, and we also have a medium. So this is the 1.5, and it's going to give me this nice thick line. Because I'm doing my best to keep my head out of the shot, I some of my lines are kind of getting wonky here. And that's just because I, uh, I'm used to being able to work with my head a lot closer to the paper. So please ignore the few times my head kind of kind of shows up. I didn't particularly like this R but I didn't have enough time to resketch a new one. So I'm keeping it and I'm hoping that with the just kind of delicate uh, design details around it that when I'm finished I'll like it more. So if you thicken one edge like I'm doing on the L, uh, if you thicken it then that will give you a sense of shadow, or if you thicken all the lines, you can play with that negative space that's left within, within the letter there, and that can be really fun as well to just kind of uh, make your the outline of your letters really emphasized, so they're very clear to see what the letters are, even if you put kind of delicate detail within the letter itself. So I took those messy bits where my lines didn't quite line up and I just went over them gently with my wide pen and as I thicken the outline it smooths out those kind of uh, messy lines I had originally. So now I'm just finishing this up a bit here. And I'm making the outline wide on all of the science letters, even though it was only kind of the S and C that were really kind of messed up with the messy lines. I used the word mess a lot right there. Uh, that had the kind of broken wiggly lines. But when I do it with all the letters, then obviously it makes them all look similar. So it kind of takes my fixing 
of kind of where it was not as clean as I liked it. And it makes it look intentional because the way I fixed it now applies to all of the letters. And so now they all look like they're just supposed to be kind of have that thick outline on them. I'm going to go in later and um, just kind of use a very fine, probably my small tip to just take care of the little corners on things like the N and the I to make those serifs really clean. But that's something that can wait till later. And let's see here, we're going to play with a thinner one now. For example, this is the fine, and this other one is small. And I'm going to see here, you can kind of see the difference in tip size. It doesn't look huge necessarily, but especially if you're doing really fine line work, you definitely notice the difference between that thin, uh, the thin line of the fine one and then the small. There is also an extra small, which is a really, really thin line that I, I enjoy using as well for things, but I think all of my, those markers have died, so I need to get some new ones. I don't see any in my bag. So I did all of these kind of ornamental filigree kind of designs throughout the inside and outside of the R here. When you have a capital letter, you can really kind of play with the decoration of it and really, you know, kind of get lost in all of the, the doodle and patterns of it. You can freehand these if you're comfortable doing that. Personally, I like to have some rough guide of where I'm going so you can kind of see there's some pencil guidelines a bit uh, giving me an idea of what I want to do, but I will still kind of freehand in things here and there. Generally, you'll just want to stick with uh, the capital or the first letter or if there's a particular letter you want to emphasize for some reason and just do one really decorated because if you do all of the letters either capital like this with all of the detail it can be a little visually overwhelming depending on your composition if you'd had for example if I did the word real and they were all capital letters with this ornate design around them that could be really overwhelming if all of the other words are also very elaborate and elegant and kind of had these really pretty filigree over the top designs to them. It could be overwhelming and hard to read for the viewer. However, if you do that and all of the other words are very clean and kind of minimalist, then it's okay to have all of the letters in that one word be really elaborate because there's enough kind of, I guess, calm in the other letters that it doesn't feel visually overwhelming to the viewer. I am going to add in just a little bit of design into the E, A, and L as well, but it's just going to be very, very little. So that shows you kind of what I have going on here. I moved back to my thick 1.5 because I'm kind of filling in a thing here to clean up these sides and give just a hint of a shadow. If you thicken one side of a letter or even an object, it gives you the illusion of a light source which also gives you the illusion of being three-dimensional. So when you have a kind of one side thicker, one side thinner, it makes you feel like there's a hint of a shadow there. Just coloring in a few of these guys. I like to do a few of these with the black 
because I think it helps balance out uh, some of the more detailed ones to have just some more kind of block plain ones. And finishing up a few more of these little curly curly cubes. I don't know. There has to be a better word, but I don't know what it is. If you have any ideas of a better word to call all these little uh, delicate curly things, I would love to. I'd love to have an idea of a better thing to call them. Doodles? They're kind of doodles, I guess. Oh, this. All right, now this is my favorite part. I'm using my Faber-Castell white eraser. And erase, 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 erase. I'm getting rid of all my guidelines. Again, I wanna make sure that everything is dry before I go and erase it because if it's still wet, it will smear. This kind of paper is really great because the ink goes down very smoothly on it, but because there's not a lot of texture to the paper, it takes a little bit longer for the paint to dry, not paint, ink. And so I like to touch it just to make sure that it's, it's dry to the touch before I go and erase it. You want to brush off all the dust. Now here I am just going to put in that water. You can see it has a hint of, of a gloss to it, a reflection. And by just putting the pigment along the very sides, I'm letting it bleed naturally into the dampness left on the paper. Again, I also go over the black with the blood because it just gives it a richer tone. And filling in these, I like to have that contrast of the kind of bulk of the letter having this sort of unique pattern of the edges just kind of bleeding how they will into the water with the little horizontal lines. Uh, I think that it's very fun to just kind of let it do what it does naturally when the when the blood mixes with the water it kind of bleeds but I will be going in later once it's dry to add some finer lines that are sharper because all of these will kind of fade out into the into the water I know it looks like I'm not doing anything when I do this because it's just water but once you put the blood down, you can see how it kind of plays into it. And I like to let it dry just a hint more before I do those angled lines. Because if it's really, really wet, like here on the E, you can see how it, it blended so much that it's kind of hard to tell that there are lines there. It just kind of looks smudgy. We're on the S and the C and the I. You can see those angled lines better. And just filling in this bit here with my little lines and my water. And you really just need to kind of paint gently over the outline and as soon as your pigment kind of touches that damp part of the paper, it will automatically start just bleeding into it. It's kind of the nature of how those two liquids blend. Again, painting with blood I've found is very similar to painting with watercolor. So here I'm doing a very, very light, barely pink kind of pigment through the whole thing, but I'll be going over it uh, with each arrow a little darker. So for the R, I mean not R, for the real, I'm gonna do this kind of dark pigment where it's a very consistent deep red. 
One of the things that is very fun about the blood is that it, it shifts in color as it dries, so it's all very kind of red, orangey to start, and then it turns into really pretty shades of brown and sepia tones, almost as if you're painting with like coffee or tea, kind of. It, it leaves a very nice kind of antique color, which I appreciate a lot. And now we are, I need to be careful when I'm coming in here not to rest my hand on the other letters that are still damp. Because when I put down the really thick layer of pigment like this, it's good because it gives you that very even, consistent color for the dark, um, you know, the deep red. But because there's so much water and, and blood there, it takes longer to dry. It still dries fairly quickly, kind of about the pace of acrylic. If you've worked with acrylic paint, how it can take a little longer to dry, but it isn't, it isn't like oil paint. But it definitely will take longer than like my is, the I and S there. Um, those would be dry by now already because it's such a thin, uh, watery layer. And I'm just kind of, I moved my canvas. Canvas? I moved my, my, it's a pad of paper actually. But I moved it to work at a better angle to help avoid because the is, or the word is, is dry. It's safe for me to rest my hand there. And yeah, this is the container I keep my blood in. It's just a little Tupperware with a, with a strong seal. Um, I have it frozen, and then I usually just take out one container at a time. So here I'm doing my slightly darker, oh, little too dark. Let me lighten that up, perfect. And so then again, I will go in later and do darker. Now since my word science is all dry now, I can go in with a thinner brush and just add these little lines. And you can see the edges are a lot cleaner because it's not bleeding into the damp around it. And I'm kind of coloring in the other parts of this just getting a second layer to kind of just make it a more rich tone and yeah just consistent consistent style of lettering so each letter kind of has these little parts that are just solid red as well as the part with the lined pattern in it and more little lines oh actually what i should do is Put my darker layer here since this is dry and so then I can finish the rest of my lettering for science while this third layer is drying. It's just getting slightly darker each time and then I'll have a final layer over this one that will be even darker. I think it's important to play around with the gradient of color so you can see with my little ornamental pieces there's really light pink, there's darker pink, there's a deep red. Oh, I had a little mess there. But it's fine because you can always splatter things like this. Just little splatters and it works. So I've added my darker part onto is and now I'm just finishing up the rest of these little lines. And we're almost done. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, watch my artist demo. If you enjoy this or if there's other things you would like to know, I realize my blood work series is a bit strange, but I really appreciate how supportive and kind people have been. It's a, it's a very vulnerable and important body of work to me. 
and if you're interested you can check it out at www.nakedcarlyart.wordpress.com and there's a tab that says bloodwork exhibition otherwise thank you for watching and have a wonderful day